Hi there guys, Deform Nortzak here. Thank you ever so much for tuning in to my Top 10 iOS Games of 2015 Part 2. The games that you'll be seeing today were released between the end of January and the end of March. Give or take a few days here and there. I really hope that you enjoy this personal and subjective list. Don't forget to subscribe to see more video game top 10s. And oh shit, yeah, don't forget to leave a comment as well. So, without further ado, let's get on with this thing! Number 10 So, right now, I'm going to do something a little bit different and bunch these four games together as I think they're equally deserving as each other. Not only that, but they all have the same, what I call a pick up and play quality about them. They are the sort of game that you'd play maybe at a bus stop or maybe waiting for your wife while she's in the changing rooms. Come on fellas, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. So these are the awesome games and at my number 10, it's Minor Z, Alto, Block Shots and Mr. Jump. So let's start off with Minor Z, a really, really simple, and simple is a word that I'm going to be using quite a lot to describe these four games in my number 10 spot. So yeah, it's a really simple digging game, and the description by its creators really describes it best. It reads, <clears throat> It's the zombie apocalypse, and you are one of the last survivors on Earth. You have but one option, dig or die. So that is what you must do, but of course you might as well try and collect as much lovely lovely loot, blow up as many zombies and of course get as far to the centre of the earth as you possibly can, or as fast as your little legs can carry you. Up next is the beautiful looking Alto which plays as good as it looks, let me tell you guys. You start atop the snow-capped mountain, equipped with a ski suit, glove, bubble hat, and of course, a pair of skis. And it's your task to basically throw yourself full force down the glistening slopes, collecting coins and avoiding rocks. You can perform tricks, and linking tricks together will trigger combos. And we all know what combos make. That's right, combos make prizes, or rather coins. In this case, which you can spend to buy perks and shops. Just to prove how classy a game this is, they didn't need to do this, but they added a day and night cycle. That's how cool this game is. Overall, Alto is where art meets great gameplay. And in my humble opinion, it should not be missed. Alley boy. On we go, and let me tell you, it's hard to make a game with a concept more simplistic than the awesome block shot. What block shot does is take a cool little game mechanic, in this case a spinning slingshot. You use the slingshot to fire projectiles at oncoming enemies. Then they add some really nice crisp graphics thumping soundtrack and hey presto you've got a really really great and yes simple little game and there's something to be said with that in a market which is flooded with million dollar titles and productions which are all the rage what do you guys think to that leave a comment below <laughs> oh my god I really don't know why I put this one in the list I'm not really sure it should be here because playing Mr. Jump aged me about 10 years, gave me an ulcer, turned my hair grey and gave me nightmares due to the stress caused by failing over and over and over again. However, the fact that I came back for more speaks for itself and proves what an addicting game Mr. Jump actually is. So it's a one button platform runner. And it's your aim basically just to simply run from one end to the other. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <coughs> You're wrong. It is hard as hell. 
It's evil. It urinates in your coffee while twisting your nipples. You know, fair enough, I've gone a bit too far with that, but give it a go. Try it yourself. Mr. Jump. Evil. Number 9. Engines ready. Drivers ready. Go, go, go. Rush Rally is a top down rally simulator, as the title would suggest. Straight away, you've got two choices at the very start. You can choose World Rally or Rally Cross. World Rally starts you off in, quite frankly, the best country in the world. Of course, Great Britain. What else could it be? I personally wouldn't bother with the rest of them. Mm, that's not nice, is it? Forget I said that. I am sorry. I do get a little bit patriotic from time to time. So, yeah, the other awesome locales. Sweden, Greece, Ethiopia, Japan. Finally, last but not least, a place I've always wanted to visit. The amazing USA. Yeehaw! Each country has six time stages where you must get your rally car from one end of the track to the other as fast as you can. Hang on a minute. A bit like every other racing game. Oh my god, I'm such a donut sometimes. I reckon my personal favourite is the Turbo Time Trial because in it lay canisters of nitrous oxide across the tarmac and the aim is to collect these while getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster well you get the idea at the start of every race or time trial the switched on developers of Rush Rally intelligently decided to allow players to choose the difficulty level easy, medium, hard and expert for those who really really like a challenge I've said it before but I will say it again the decision to do this is great because what it does it opens up the game to everyone so no matter what skill level you are you're fully catered for I do applaud you Stephen Brown that's the guy who basically made this game possible so as for the rallycross side of things you're set against three other computer players across different locations such as mud, sand, snow and tarmac and because it changes from race to race your driving skills are tested to the limit each time which is great fun some really cool features that I'd like to point out are car customization from colour to aerodynamics to suspension the list goes on, there's so much to choose from. There's optional Facebook integration, if you like that kind of thing. A single purchase to unlock the entire game as well. Alas, the game is not perfect. The levels look a bit sparse and the music is a little bit repetitive. And the game does lack an online multiplayer option. However, these issues are easy to look past as the game is essentially free and awesome fun. I have had hours of gameplay and not once did I feel the need to reach into my pocket and buy the game outright. However, I did and basically that was to show my appreciation to the developers. So because it's free, why not give it a go? Number 8 What is that clicking sound? What is it? I really hope it's not what I think it is. Oh god damn it. It's a noise a Geiger counter makes. Which can only mean one thing. Radiation Island is my number 8. And also, there's a 76.6% probability that I would grow another testicle. It might be a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not sure. Ladies, can you just take a look at this please? 
So first things first, your stomach is rumbling, you're absolutely starving. You're on what appears to be a beautiful tropical island. The game then throws you into a really simple tutorial, so to orientate yourself within the playing field. It may be a beautiful place to look at, but with a name like Radiation Island, you know something is going to turn ugly. It's just a matter of time. So once you've learned to crack yourself an axe and other bits and bobs, you're nudged on your merry way to see what the place has in store for your weary ass. You're provided with a notebook, which is really important for providing you with a map, a survival task list, and it gives you the game settings as well. Towards the end of the tutorial, you're greeted with a choice of game types. Exploration, which means nothing will attack you. Adventure means it's not easy, but the game is doable. And then of course you've got survival, which has bludgeoned to death by a psychotic radiation riddled maniac written all over it. So, just like most survival games, you have the ability to craft certain items like fires, axes, various other tools, and so Radiation Island is no different in that respect. As you'll probably remember me saying before, your stomach is giving off hunger pangs, which obviously means the murdering of small animals for meat begins in earnest. Yay! Butchery! Oh, and if you're looking for a game that is going to be an absolute cakewalk, then think again. Because Radiation Island will kick your ass off, even on the medium setting, which is adventure mode. Just to make you aware of that fact. The main things you'll be doing on the island are gathering, mining, hunting, you know, the general surviving and crafting. Oh, and running away from the odd sword-wielding zombie, which, you know, you've got to love that. I'm always amazed to see PC quality gaming on mobile devices, and Radiation Island does it like no other. I can almost hear my little iPad begging me for mercy, please, please, don't push me too far. The processor is just like pushed to its very limits of what it can do. Oh, and by the way, it's only £2.29 or £2.99 in America. So what are you waiting for? Get it downloaded now! Number 7 On my last top 10, I received a few comments saying, How could you have missed the amazing particle mess? The problem was, the game was released right on the deadline, so unfortunately it was overlooked, but not anymore. You'd be pleased to know. I am so glad I got to play, and therefore include, Particle Maze in my top 10, because this game is a hyper chaotic symphony of life and destruction set in the deepest, darkest reaches of outer space. You start off in the cold, dark vacuum of space, and unfortunately, there are hostile craft out to kick your puny human ass. It doesn't matter though, because your ship is equipped with far superior disruptor beams, plasma cannons, and a state-of-the-art cloaking device. Or it would be if I hadn't left the ship in the garage at home. Instead, we've got a tractor beam, and some rubbish we found floating around the cosmos. And so, with the, ah well, if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down fighting sort of attitude that only shows up in dire situations such as this, you come out fighting like a trapped animal, swinging your particle mace left and right. The easiest thing to kill in this game is yourself at first, but well, you know, you'll get used to this physics. They are a little bit tricky at first, but in no amount of time, you'll be out there swinging and bashing them alien scum to kingdom come soon enough, all right. Particle Mace is a neatly packaged, 
no frills, does exactly what it says on the tin sort of game. So I'm going to take a leaf out of there, but get your ass out there and buy it. Simple. Number six. Swap Quest is a really amazing mashup of the puzzle and RPG genre. Which, on paper, to be fair, sounds like a bit of a disaster, but in truth, it works really, really well. So, let me tell you a little bit about it, shall I? So yeah, what you need to do is touch and drag the tiles into a new position to build a path so that you can escape the horde who are hunting our little hero down. Uh, maybe to skin him alive and use his bones for glue. Well, maybe not that far, but I'm pretty sure they don't want to sit down and have a cup of tea with him. Various monsters stand scattered across the path in an attempt to stop our little hero or heroine from venturing any further. Battling these little buggers couldn't be easier because it's a simple automatic turn-based system. As long as you keep up to date with all the latest sword and chainmail armour technology, at the end of the day you should be fine, fingers crossed. So, you like boss battles in your games, do you? Well, Swap Quest has you well and truly covered on that front, guys. There are plenty dotted around the map to test your skills. Getting bored is a difficult thing to do in this game. Near impossible, I would say. Because at the start of each level, they give you a set of quests to complete. Now, whether you do that is totally up to yourself. But at the end of the day, you won't want to miss out on all that beautiful loot now, would you? So, on your journey, you'll find treasure chests dotted about containing unimaginable treasures. Don't worry about some of them being locked. What you can do is you can tap on them to break the chains. Most objects you'll find are interactive, which means when you tap them, gemstones or other goodies shoot out. A bit like a fountain. I tell you what, it's really satisfying. As you would expect, at the end of each level, you're given a rundown of how you did. So, like time it took to complete the level and the amount of jewels collected, etc. The minimap in this game really reminds me of old RPG maps. It's incredibly nostalgic. It's great fun. So you've collected a wheelbarrow full of gems. What do you do? Well, don't worry, there's a caravan selling all sorts from swords to armour to aid you on your perilous questings. One of the great things about this is there's a really smooth learning curve which invites both youngster and adult alike and I feel this is a real bonus. There's nothing worse than getting stuck right away at the beginning of a puzzle game. The graphics are really beautiful, pixelated, hand-drawn treat for the eye. Masterfully drawn in that 8-bit style which us oldies remember fondly and the young'uns think is really cool. So, what I would suggest is, give Swap Quest a real good try, I'm sure you will absolutely love it, and enjoy it as much as I did. Number 5 He's a pinball wizard that's got to be a catch! I'm really sorry about the singing, but <laughs> as far as Pinball Arcade, which is my number 5, I am not sorry, one little bit. The game was born out of the love of. The love of classic retro pinball gaming at its very best. It's also born out of obsessive attention to detail, to the point where I truly do wonder about the mental state of the people that recreate and assemble these tables in digital form. You have to have some sort of screw loose, that's for sure. It's clear to see this as soon as you draw back the ball launcher to see the shiny metal ball go flying around the table made all the more real by the amazing physics and awesome sound effects. I know it sounds like I'm blowing smoke here but I mean every single word of it. It's awesome. 
I personally couldn't count myself, so I bought the whole entire collection over a course of two months or so. I have my favourites such as Starship Troopers, Black Hole and yes, this is me playing terribly. Uh, the old one, Big Shot, Creature of the Black Lagoon, with its 3D effects which are awesome. There's loads more. Oh yeah, and how could I forget the insanely popular Adams Family? Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Hooray! Oh crap, yeah, there's uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, which is amazing too. Wow, as I mentioned, all these really cool pinball machines. My appreciation for pinball arcade really grows. It's it's a real triumph. I know the eagle-eyed of you will realise that Pinball Arcade was released ages ago, but it didn't reach critical mass until Adam's Family was released, in my opinion, so that's why I put it in my 2015 top 10. So you're looking for an authentic emulation of your favourite pinball machine of all times gone by? Check! At a sensible price! Well, come on down, Pinball Arcade is your winner! You know, I could keep listing all the things that are available in Pinball Arcade, go into every tiny little minutia, but I think that would spoil it, and besides, I've not got 24 hours to do a video. That, though, just shows you how much content there is in Pinball Arcade. So, do yourself a favour and give it a go. Pinball Arcade by Farsight Studios. Remember that. Number 4 Kung Fu Panda is old news these days. It's all about Tai Chi Panda. Yeah, 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 I know the name is a bit of a rip-off and it's a little bit on the generic side, but it doesn't take away from the fact that this game is actually pretty awesome and it's a fully featured action MMO RPG for the iOS that will blow your socks off. So you might be thinking in the back of your mind, you know, it's style over substance. But I can assure you, yes, the game looks beautiful, but it plays amazingly well. Straight out of the gate, you get a sense that a lot of time and effort has gone into the making of Tai Chi Panda, making it a premium title, and yet I really do think they've pulled this off. There was a time, not so long ago, that MMOs were bound to PCs because mobile gaming just didn't have the grunt to render the beautifully designed environments while having people from all around the globe fighting monsters and each other, but this time has come and it's amazing. Sure, it's not the first MMO on the iOS market, but it's the first to do everything really, really well. So let's take a look at what's on offer. You've got four playable characters with different styles. You've got a fantastic in-depth and fascinating skill tree. Pets. Loads of pets. Guilds and specific quests relating to guilds. PvP. And of course, you've got your events. And I tell you, the list just goes on and on and on. You know, I don't have time to do a video that's going to last an hour. There's loads and loads of dungeons with some nasty creatures guarding them and there's some sick, sick loot. And like I say, I could be here listing them off all day, but I reckon you get the idea. Tai Chi Panda is free to download, hello, free to download. So, you've got no excuses, give it a whirl. Number three. This game, should be in everybody's top 10 in my opinion just because of the name it's called Silly Sausage in Meatland how cool is that? Nitrome, the developers 
have pulled out yet another smash hit out of the bag and they keep doing it time after time after time. In fact, this is the second game they have got in my top 10 in 2015 alone, which really speaks volumes. So, how to describe Silly Sausage in Meatland? Well, obviously, I thought about it quite a lot and the best way to describe it is you take an old retro classic game, Snake, drag it into 2015 by juicing up the graphics and the sound, and then when you've done all that, drop two tabs of acid, and voila, that silly sausage in Meatland. <laughs> but in all seriousness, guys, you're a sausage that has the amazing ability to stretch. I'd say very much like Stretch Armstrong, or that dude from Fantastic Four, um, Mr. Fantastic. That's what all the ladies call me anyway. It's your aim to get as far as you possibly can, but don't worry if you die because scattered throughout are emeralds that are used to buy checkpoints so that if you're not as skilled as I am, for example, which, let's face it, 99.99999% of the world's population aren't, it allows you to start from said checkpoint, which helps greatly, you know, for, for players like you. Not me, of course, you know, because you know, I can do it in one go. I wouldn't suggest buying every single checkpoint along the way, but then again, I wouldn't suggest going too far without buying a checkpoint either. I heard that if you die, you go right back to the beginning. That's if you haven't bought a checkpoint. So I'm told, obviously, you know, by a friend. Yeah, it was definitely a friend, I think. Yeah, yeah, a friend. That was it. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of obstacles to keep you on your toes, and it's just a case of avoiding and swerving around them. But, as the game progresses, they introduce more and more devious ways to kill your poor little sausage dog. There's some really amazing examples of excellent level designs to keep an eye out for. So, overall, Silly Sausage is a deceptively simple game with great gameplay elements, good sound, and on top of all that, beautifully hand-drawn pixels by the incredibly talented artist, Helm, whose fine artistry stands out in its own right. Oh, and did I mention the game is absolutely free to download, so what are you waiting for, guys? Get on download silly sausage and meatland number two wow talk about innovative different and standing out from the crowd dark echo has all this in spades and some it really took a genius to think of a game like this dark echo has you starting off in what appears to be a dark, empty void, if you will, and all you can see is two footprints. Every time you walk, you make what I describe as sound waves emitted from your person. These sound waves are then bounced off the wall, and it has this incredible effect of almost mapping out the room around you, but Bear in mind, it's not permanent, so you have to keep moving and creating sound waves to build a picture of the space around you. Use this, and it'll point you to the direction of the exit. I guess it's kind of similar to echolocations that animals use, in which they send out clicks and wait for them to bounce back, building up a sound map, if you like. The look and feel to the game is minimalistic and to be quite honest I really don't think the game would have suited any other style which is perfect. I'm not really sure I should say this but it almost lets me imagine what it would be like to be blind which is a very unusual thing for a game to make you feel. The more and more I think about Dark Echo and the way it makes me feel the more and more I love it and appreciate it. 
As the game progresses and opens up, it introduces more and more clever mechanics. One of my favourites is the clapping effect, where the longer you hold your finger down on the screen, the bigger the burst of sound waves is emitted from you. It helps build up that all-important image of the environment you're in at the time. Dark Echo is a must-have for anybody with an iOS device and I encourage you to shell out the couple of quid or the couple of bucks, whatever it is, the game costs to buy. Once you have it, put on some headphones, play in a room with little or no light whatsoever, better still play at night or on Halloween at midnight. <laughs> And so here it is, my number one spot, and it goes to one of the best races I've had the pleasure to play on the iOS, is AG Drive. You start out a beginner in the world of anti-gravity racing in the far-flung future. I was totally amazed from the get-go, and the level of thought that went into making the tracks, ships, sounds, and of course the graphics is absolutely immense. The beautiful graphics are all thanks to the Zorg 3D engine, which until AG Drive, I will admit I've never heard of it before, but it's a name that I won't be forgetting in a hurry, that's for sure. As I said before, an incredible level of detail has been poured into almost every aspect to give you an overall shiny premium game that you won't want to put down. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a fully fleshed out main event as well as quick events. These are sectioned into different categories such as Cup, Speed Record, Duel, Score Chase, Delta, I mean the list goes on and on, I could be here all day. The tracks in AG Drive are just awesome. One minute you're flying down a vertical slope at what feels like 2,000 miles an hour, only to have the track do a 45 degree shift. Couple that with jumps, speed boosts and more, it will literally blow your bloody socks off. Oh yeah, don't forget the music. It's so good they even created a banging soundtrack that you can download separately as an album in its own right. I am running this game on a first generation iPad mini and I'm using a program on top of that called Reflector to give you the video that you're seeing right now. So that's why you may or may not see a little frame drop here and there. So let me assure you, without my iPad having to stream images to Reflector the game runs smooth as butter on my iPad mini. It's staggering, really. So if you had any doubts before about adding AG Drive to your iOS gaming collection, then I hope I've put those doubts and fears to bed. So what are you waiting for? Get to the App Store, get that card registered, and buy AG Drive. You will not regret it. Right then guys, I really really would like to say a big thank you to you for watching my video. A lot of time and effort went into making it. There are a few games that didn't quite make the list, so this is the honourable mentions part. Just because these games are in the honourable mentions list doesn't mean that the games are terrible in any way, shape or form. It just means for one reason or another they just managed to just not quite make the grade unfortunately. So my apologies if this time around you know your game was not on the list. I am really sorry about that but get a life and get over it. Planet Quest is a really quirky rhythm based game that didn't quite make my top 10 but it is a must have if you like this genre. As you can see, this is actually me playing terribly at this game, but 
cannot believe I'm showing you it. My gameplay footage is so embarrassing. You wouldn't believe how close I was to introducing this amazing stealth game to my list. Sneaky sneaky missed out by a cat's whisker. However, not all is not lost because a while ago I did a full gameplay review. The link for this is just popping up in the corner about now. No. Now? Now? Okay. If you're watching on a tablet or a mobile, unfortunately there won't be a link showing up. So what I suggest you do is just jump onto my channel and you'll be able to uh, find Sneaky Sneaky on there, no problem whatsoever. The Cluster is a really awesome minimalistic shooting of or shmup as the kids call them these days, whose aesthetics are really pleasing to the eye in my opinion. The Cluster is a fantastically freaky, fascinating, flipping, fast-paced, frenetic fuel firefight that is sure to get you buzzing. Who could resist Final Fantasy? Play as your favourite heroes and relive the epic battles from episodes past. I could have easily put this monster smash hit into my top 10 but I thought I would give lesser known titles a chance as they need to be shown the same love too, you know. Same goes for Tales of the Borderlands 2. It's an amazing interactive story told wonderfully by the geniuses at Telltale Games. I would recommend this game to anybody, any day, but I have a funny feeling this is going to do incredibly well without my help or anyone else's to that matter. Thanks for watching my video guys, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like or leave a comment. If you are going to leave a comment, why not tell me what's your top 10? What would you do differently? Please let me know. I'm always there and I'll always reply. Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Press the little subscribe button. Come on, don't be tired. Press it. Go on, please. It really helps. Go on. That's it. You can do it. Nice. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.